The key rigging safety principles covered in this video are 1. Always use rated hardware and only use rated hardware. Rated hardware will come with a stamp from the manufacturer with a suggested safe working load limit. If it doesn't have that stamp, chances are it's not rated hardware. Rated hardware is generally not available at your Home Depot, Lowe's, or other local hardware stores. You'll need to order it from a theatrical rigging supply store or from one of the other industry suppliers that sell rated hardware to construction and other industries. Number two, attachment points must be through bolted on key supporting members of your scenery. Using eye lags and eye screws and eyelets and hooks does not meet this requirement. The threads do not through bolt and could easily be overstripped and stripped out and tear out under stress. On the same principle, drywall screws and construction screws and wood screws also do not meet this requirement. You should instead through bolt with machine screws or machine bolts or some other bolting hardware or mechanism. Number three, you must attach to fixed rigging points such as your lighting grid or other overhead grid system in your theater or studio or attach to steel beams or other fixed points in the ceiling. Do not attach to electrical conduit. Do not attach to plumbing pipes. Do not attach to HVAC systems and duct work. Do not attach to Unistrut that is supporting any of those items. Number four, always use aircraft cable or chain or other rated hardware to attach your scenery to your fixed overhead rigging points. Tie line is not appropriate as an overhead rigging option for scenery. Tie line is only okay for hanging curtains and for dressing cable on electrics. This is a wooden beam rigged overhead and we're going to show some really frightening overhead rigging. This should be hung from the ceiling to fixed points with aircraft cable, with rated hardware attaching it to the wood. And that rated hardware should bolt through the lumber 100% so that it has a positive attachment point. So we're looking at this beam. It's all made out of wood and one by three, roughly painted to look like rusted metal. And look at that. Attachment point by a number six or number eight eyelet, not rated hardware. It's not welded, the eyelet isn't welded so it can separate and it's only held in by a short little bit of threads. And then above that, a piece of tie line attached to a conduit on this case. And you can't just hang stuff from random conduit in the room. Conduit is electrical. It's not a rigging point. You need to find an attachment point to the ceiling or to the grid or to some rafters or some other point above. I mean, there's this pipe right here to attach it to. You can figure out a rig to attach to this rigging point. It's right nearby here. This whole beam runs along this pipe and there's nothing attaching to this pipe as part of the grid. We have another one over here. This one's even more frightening. The eyelet is there, it's attached to a piece of Unistrut, and that little tie line could easily just slip right off of the end of the Unistrut. Wow, wow. Not that the tie line is even rated for this, but at least put it on the other side of the hanger bolt so it can't slip off the Unistrut. Come on, people. Wow, frightening overhead rigging. One more attachment point here, also an eyelet, also just tie lined to a piece of conduit. Nice, doesn't get much better than that. Oh man, I don't know what these stage hands were thinking. Wow, wow. And you can see it's not even attached to any other scenery. 
It's just resting here. The only thing holding it up is that tie line and that eyelet and the fact that it's resting on this duct work. But there's nothing else securing it in place. All of these tie lines, well, that one's not in much tension, but they're holding the weight. And this tie line is not rated to hold any weight. You can tie curtains to a pipe. You can tie up your cables to your pipe for your electrical with tie line. But nothing like this. Curtains and cable, you're distributing those tie lines regularly over the load and it's spreading out and you're putting enough in every foot, every two feet in a frequency that you are eliminating the rigging hazard of that overhead load by having enough tie line points and tie points. But you can't do that with a piece of 15 foot long lumber bolted together to look like a beam. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. You might be thinking that the beam with the substandard rigging wasn't really much of a danger. And at the surface level, it might look that way. The beam was pretty much fully resting on the ductwork. And with the set fully installed, the beam was sandwiched between a shelf unit and the ductwork. So it really couldn't go anywhere. And these safety tie lines were just a extra measure of safety just in case. And there's an argument for that, but we have a responsibility in theater to the life safety of the performers and the stage crew and the audience. And this type of installation simply does not meet those requirements. In order to do that, we have to follow safe practices. And in this case, that means using proper overhead rigging hardware, cable, and attachment points. This particular piece of scenery could have been secured on either end to the flats and the walls and the other scenery, and then it would have been like a header over a doorway or an archway, and it wouldn't have needed overhead rigging. So there are other solutions too, but since this one chose to use an overhead rigging solution, we have to measure it by its failure to meet the overhead rigging solution minimum requirements. This kind of rigging solution becomes a problem when something fails and people get injured. We should always choose to prevent injury and prevent the risk of injury. And this solution fails to prevent the risk of injury. Not only is there risk of injury to performers, stagehands, and audience, with substandard rigging. The stagehands doing the substandard rigging or the lead carpenter or the shop supervisor or the technical director all put themselves at risk of personal liability should an accident or injury occur. Other than using proper overhead rigging solutions and installations, one of the best tools for documenting safe rigging practices is to use the rigging log to document your work. Detail the hardware and methods used. If something fails and you documented it well in the rigging log, that becomes an equipment failure and not a personal judgment error. Using the rigging log also slows you down and makes you think twice about all of your decisions and calculations which becomes especially important under the pressure of trying to meet deadlines. The stagehand installing this piece of scenery may have been certain that it was safe and they may have performed all the necessary load calculations and documented that work. But in this case, they are also setting an example by using substandard overhead rigging practices. And that sets an example for others to see this work and think this work is acceptable when it is not. That using tie line and attaching to conduit is okay, but it's not, and it should never be okay. All too often in theater, the poor practices of a few teach others how to do things impractically, unsafely, or worse. It's your responsibility as a stagehand and as a rigger to learn how to do things the right way and the safe way and to not perpetuate practices that are unsafe. Choose always to do things properly and safely, especially with life safety items like overhead rigging of scenery.